discuss about radio triangulation. And in this video, we have five objectives. First is to show you some example pictures of radio towers. Second, we will illustrate and explain how radio triangulation works. Third, we're going to explain how radio triangulation is applied on mobile phones. Fourth, we're going to identify how circles is applied in radio triangulation. And lastly, we will solve an example of word problem for you. So, without further ado, let's start. These are the example pictures of radio towers used for triangulation. This illustration is the process of determining the location of radio transmitter, cell phone, by measuring the radio distance or direction of the received signals from three different points in which the radius of T1 is 4 units, T2 is 6 units, and T3 is 2 units from each tower to the location of the cell phone. Scientists also use triangulation to find the epicenter of an earthquake. When seismic data is collected from at least three different locations, it can be used to determine the epicenter by where it intersects. So how is radio triangulation used in mobile phones? A cell phone is an example of a radio transmitter. Radio triangulation is applied in mobile phones by the phone's cellular network to allow the phone to interact with a variety of cell towers and for each cell to evaluate the phone's signal strength. The network analysis software can estimate the distance of the phone from each tower. If the phone communicates with three or more tow towers, triangulation software may estimate the phone's geographic location or geographic position on a three-dimensional plane based on the signal strength from each tower. Cell phone triangulation gathers data and approximates the location of the cell phone in question. How circles are applied in radio triangulation? So let's first oversimplify the radio triangulation to get an intuitive feel of how circles are used in it. Consider the case of three radio transmitters, each with an isotropic radiation pattern and an equal transmit power. Let's even disregard multiply for the time being up, as though the three transmitters and we are suspended in space. From this point, we can perform either scalar or vector triangulation, knowing that the power received from each transmitter is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from each transmitter. Allow us to perform a fairly straightforward scalar triangulation each transmitter's corresponding locations are known to us. Additionally, we are normally aware of the transmitter's exact geodesy and ephemeris location. Our reference plane is established by three transmitters. One example of a word problem involving radio triangulation. An earthquake of magnitude 4.4 occurred 73 kilometers southeast of Mati, Philippines, the European Mediterranean Seismological Center reported. The earthquake hit at an intermediate to considerable depth of 152 kilometers beneath the epicenter near Mati, Davao Oriental, Philippines, after midnight on Monday, August 29, 2022 at 12.58 a.m. A 
second report was later issued by the Citizen Seismograph Network of Raspberry Shade, which listed it as a magnitude 4.4 earthquake as well. Towns or cities near the epicenter where the earthquake might have been felt as very weak shaking include Bobon, located 57 km from the epicenter, Tamisan, 58 km away, Tarragona, 65 km away. The earthquake was probably not felt. The question is, what is the exact location of the epicenter if Bobon located 57 km from the epicenter, Tamisan 58 km away, and Tarragona 65 km away? The answer is, the epicenter of the 4.4 magnitude earthquake is located at 6 degrees, 31 minutes, and 34.6 seconds north, and 126 degrees, 43 minutes, and 7 seconds east. That's how we use triangulation in finding the epicenter of an earthquake.